TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right behind me, this is where you can catch a live or you could replay a live if you missed the live. Because there are certain things we watch on live that we do not watch on YouTube. That's hence why I'm banned right now. Because I put something on YouTube that I shouldn't have. But anywho. Uh, don't forget we do got Patreon as well, man. We can post Monday through Friday. I'm locked out of my Patreon account until Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday. But y'all get all the videos in one day. So cahoots. Cheers. Hey. Don't forget we do got merch as well. My bad. Let's get into this, man. Sky Boy. Hit that young like button. Northwest London's most dangerous gangster. I don't even want to say the name. I'm going to butcher it. Let's just listen. Okay, today we'll be diving into the life of Muzakir Shah, a.k.a. Pesci. Despite being born in Burnley, was from the infamous Graham Park Estate, which is located in Northwest London, in the borough of Barnet. Now, it is said by many sources Pesci during his college years was bullied inside and outside of school. In 1998, when he was 17 and living in Graham Park, he and his friend Romain Nurse was attacked with a hammer at a metal bar near Collingdale tube station. Pesci was left in Royal Free with a So what I'm hearing from right now is that y'all made this man a gangster. Man was in college trying to do the right thing, but y'all just kept bullying him. Y'all bullied him in the thugging. That's tough. With a fractured skull, but later recovered. At the time, he lived with his father, Saeed, mother, two sisters, and three brothers in a flat in their state. It's these sort of events that turn a teenager into a ruthless gangster. We've seen the same story play out repeatedly. Now, during this period in his life, he would purposely run around the estate looking for innocent people, which he then threatened at gunpoint. He did this to gain a reputation. His behavior was an imitation of the actor Joe Pesci from Goodfellas. This explains why he chose Pesci as an alias. He would repeat this action multiple times every few days and stand outside corner shops with other gang members. Reputation gained him a lot of followers in the Graham Park estate, two being Yambo and Magambo, both his right-hand men. Now Pesci formed a gang known as Thug Fam, also known as Thug Family, in the mid-2000s. He had a five-star tattoo to signify that he was the general of the gang. Prominent members included Gully, Yambo, Magambo. I can't even be mad at this dude Pesci, man. Y'all turned the boy into this. He was chilling. Y'all turned this savage up. Now look what he did. He tatted five-star generals on him. He did all this. Ish, Blim, and many more. Most members were from Greenwich, which is a borough in southeast London, <coughs> and some were from the Graham Park estate. Now Pesci was a gunman. He would roll with four guns, two Glocks and two Macs. He even named his Macs Chucky and Matilda. Now Fog Fam hey, was, bro is crazy. was known for robbing local corner shops at gunpoints and at times go into the outskirts of London, places such as Bradford, where the gang would sometimes commit armed robberies, implementing brutal assaults on bystanders. Pesci, real name, Muzakir Shah, was actually caught on CCTV, bait face, robbing a North London corner shop. Seven months later, he wanted to go to jail. He was at it again, this time in Bradford. Pesci, along with other Fug Fan members, such as Yambo and Magambo, conducted a robbery. The robbery was carefully planned and involved up to seven different men, three vehicles, two guns, and a knife to rob a travel agency. Pesci carried a 9mm pistol while Yambo carried the Mac. Now on the 18th of November 2005, the plan was put into motion with three other men acting as lookouts for the gang. Pesci, Yambo and Magambo entered and was able to take £5,000. Now two policewomen in Sharon of Janivsky and Theresa Milburn responded to reports that an attack alarm had been activated a travel agent <coughs> on Morley Street in Bradford. Upon arrival, the officers encountered the three men who had robbed the agent. Two were armed with a gun, another with a knife. Now Pesci and Yambo fired at them immediately from point blank range, fatally wounding Sharon in the chest and hitting Milburn in the chest before all three men made a getaway in a convoy of cars. Sharon was now the seventh female officer to die in the line of duty in England and Wales 
and the second female officer to be fatally oh, shot. Peace. She once bragged on a track called Real Killers. I've got to pop shot, drop cops on the block. Now, after the members return to their... He gotta be in jail for life right now. ...hideout following the shooting of PC Sharon and her colleague PC Theresa Milburn, it is said the gang squabbled. Mustaf Jama took only a thousand pound of the five thousand and fled to Somalia via Dubai. Now a week after the oh, murder okay. and Yusuf Jama, aka Yambo, was arrested in Birmingham. He is seen on CCTV being booked with his hat on. Police suspected they had Yusuf. However, when asked for his name, he gave a fake one in Abdi Ahmed. When the police want to establish the suspect's identity quickly, they use LiveScan, which is a computer system that can instantly read and compare fingerprints to the millions held on the police national computer. Within ten if he's in there, I'm sure he was. 10 minutes of comparing fingerprints, confirmation came through that Abdi Ahmed was in fact Yusuf Jama. West Yorkshire police had the first of the three suspects. <coughs> despite interrogating Mr. Yusuf, he didn't say a oh, word, wow, despite the overwhelming evidence stacked against him, such as witness identifying him, his fingerprints and DNA being found on the inside of the robber's car. Yusuf Jama was charged with murder. Now four weeks into the police investigation and he received a crucial tip-off, letting them know that Pesci was hiding out in Newport, Wales. Police got word that in Newport, there was a tanker that was scheduled to sell in 48 hours to Pakistan, which was Pesci's home country. Now with the search still on, something odd happened. Yeah, Pesci decided to hand himself in. Listen, my friend. Yeah, that's a little bit odd. Didn't expect that to happen. Why he do that? I with a shaven head to But I told y'all bro wanted to go to jail. I already <laughs> avoid detection. He was finally in police custody and brought to West Yorkshire for questioning. Now despite going no comment all the way, unfortunately for him, his fingerprints were found on a laptop bag left in the travel agents. His DNA was also found in the Toyota RAV4. To make matters worse for him, three days after his arrest, police found the same Mac. Oh, it's over. Say goodbye. He's in jail for life. Ten used in a robbery and the ammunition, as well as his fingerprints on a plastic bag full of bullets. It's a done deal, buddy. Pesci was charged with murder and attempted murder. Now, during the trial of the murder of PC Sharon Beshinevsky, Pesci, real name Muzekir Shah, 25 of London, and Jambo, real name Yusuf Jama, 20 of Small Heath, Birmingham, were both given life sentences at Newcastle Crown Court. Mr. No Justice surprise. Andrew Smith told them that they must serve at least 35 years before being considered for parole for their awful killing. Shah had admitted murder. Jama, however, denied murder but was convicted by a jury at the end of a complex 11-week trial. Pesci was, however, cleared of the attempted murder. Mr. Justice Andrew Smith ruled Muzakir Shah had no case to answer for over the attempted murder of PC Theresa Milburn following the raid in Bradford City Centre. During the trial, PC Milburn sobbed in the witness box as she recalled seeing PC Sharon head flop to the side before she collapsed in the heap in front of her. After being shot in the chest, 37-year-old PC Milburn staggered down the road before collapsing and issuing a Code Zero alert to summon help. Coughing up blood, she managed to describe the gun. Zero's officer down, ain't it? I didn't watch too many shows to not know that. Men to fellow officers as they arrived at the scene. PC Milburn recalled seeing the Asian man and black man in a doorway of the premises, with the Asian man pointing a gun towards them. PC Milburn told the court the Asian man was responsible for shooting dead her colleague and injuring herself. She said I could see his forearm and his arm from his elbow and his hand extended to 90 degrees pointing to where Sharon was stood. I saw in his hand he had a gun. She added, it was the Asian male that had the gun. PC Milburn repeatedly denied suggestions put by Diana Ellis QC for sure that she was mistaken and the black man was responsible. The court heard Shah and others shouted, yeah, 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 let's go for it, when they were told by a man called Uncle, whose real name is Piran Ditta Khan, and who remains on a run for police. They could expect between 50,000 and 100,000 if they were to succeed in a mission. Now, Pesci wasn't just a dangerous man himself. He was so influential that those who looked up to him would do anything to gain his validation. This was the case for Hanad Hassan, who lived on the same estate. Kayan Prince, was a talented footballer and Queen's Park Rangers youth player. He was the son of boxer Mark Prince. Kyan Prince attended London Academy School. 
while Hannah had also attended and had been a pupil in the year above. Now there was issues between the two. Some say Hannah was envious of his success. Others say the school he had been attending had been terrorized by members of Fugfan for weeks and that older Fugfan members would often instruct Hannah to carry out petty crimes to be considered a somebody. Why well, used to hate that when grown gangbangers come back to the high school? Like, bro, go, 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 go get a PhD or something. Like, you grown. Like, what are you doing? The area. While some people say Hannah had legitimate problems with Kaya, <coughs> whatever the reason, it would lead to calamity. Now, on the 18th of May 2006, Prince was involved in an altercation with Hannah Hassan outside the school gates. Hassan managed to get Prince in a headlock before stabbing him once in the heart with a pen knife. A Metropolitan Police Sergeant from the local Edgeware Safer Neighbourhood team found Prince. He was transferred by air to the Royal London Hospital in Whitechapel, where he was pronounced dead two hours yeah. later. Two days later, Hassan was charged with Prince's murder. On the 2nd of July 2007, following a trial at the Old Bailey, during which Hassan denied murdering Prince by admitting manslaughter, he was convicted of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 13 years to be served. Now back to the trial of PC Sharon. In the next 18 months, the police investigation was gathering intel on Mustaf Jama's whereabouts in Somalia. They discovered his father was a clan leader in a northern region of Somalia known as Puntland. They managed to narrow it down to here and were now tasked with working with Somali intelligence to track him down. They struck they gold were? when Somali intelligence received a tip off that Mustaf Jama was to make a trip on the road near the Ethiopian border. Now a special team of armed men were put in charge of- I wouldn't of think that would work out there. You search for somebody. His capture, they managed to get to the destination before him and set up a roadblock. Now, the waiting game ensued. Most of Jamas approached the destination before being surrounded. Unarmed, he was easy prey and easily captured. After taking custody of Mustaf Jama, Somali police took pictures of him and sent them to West Yorkshire Police for confirmation. Mustaf was later extradited back to the UK via That's Dubai. Crazy. Now in 2007, while Yambo and Pesci that. were in prison, they teamed up and stabbed another inmate. The injured inmate from Northwest England suffered wounds to the stomach and cuts to the face. He received treatment at the University Hospital of North Durham. Pesci and Yambo have since been sent to separate prisons. Now in 2005, Mustaf Jama was put on trial for murder where he was then sentenced to life and told he would serve at least 35 years for the murder of- Back in the early 2000s, they were sending out life sentences, huh? 35 and them. Now you can get a 20. Mother of three, Sharon. Now the mastermind of the robbery, Piran Dita Khan, who was 38 at the time, fled the country back to Pakistan after the police officer shooting incident back in 2005. He managed to set himself up as a property developer and was living a millionaire lifestyle in the Mayfair of Islamabad. Khan even faked his own death by registering a false grave. Now in 2020, Khan was viewing a property with an associate near his home in Bahria town when two cars sped up and he was arrested by officers from the British National Crime Agency and Pakistan's Federal Investigation Agency. Police had him under surveillance after a tip-off. It is believed he moved to Islamabad because he felt he was able to disappear, but this proved increasingly difficult as his property business was doing reasonably well. Khan was now heading for a less comfortable life in the UK jail once the extradition is completed. His younger brother said he came to visit us when he came back to Pakistan. He told us- Well, at least he set up something for somebody to take over. About the incident. Was successful and said he didn't do it. His younger brother said he's an older man in his 70s and it seems he could go away for the rest of his life now. He went out to conduct a deal and now it's all over. It would seem somebody sold him out. Now on the 6th of October 2023, 74 <coughs> year old Khan appeared at Leeds Crown Court and pleaded not guilty to PC Sharon's murder. He also denied two counts of possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life and further two counts of possessing a prohibited weapon on the day of the alleged murder. He admitted a single charge of robbery on the 18th of November 2005, the same day PC Sharon was killed in relation to stealing cash from a man called Muhammad Yusuf. The judge, Mr. Justice, appeared at Leeds Crown Court Mr. via video link from the Old Bailey. He remanded Khan in custody until his next hearing with a trial oh, date scheduled COVID. for next February 2024. Now the oh, actions of Pesci right. and his friends when he said and done created a notorious reputation for the Graham Park estate. This caused a ripple effect 
and shortly after, other gangs began emerging. Lastly, I want to add, it is rumoured that Pesci was arrested in connection to another murder, but due to insufficient evidence, he was found not guilty. Now I have a plan to keep I ain't gonna lie, but he beat a lot of murder. But he beat a lot of M's, but the one he didn't, you in there 35, it don't even matter. Jammed up. Oh, that was it? Okay, my bad. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.